Um, and if you're watching carefully, if you're listening carefully, whether it's me, uh, our man or woman of God, uh, Pastor Mike Smith, or Pastor Ken, if you're listening carefully and you're following carefully, you'll begin to see, you can see the roadmap that we're drawing you. We, you can see the roadmap that we're drawing you to. We're not saying that you have to create anything. The roadmap is leading to what's already available to you. Amen? It's, it's I'll use MapQuest. I, I like the voice to tell me where to go, even if I'm local, because like, it can tell me a better way. It save me some time. Uh, but what it, account, what it can't account for are the distractions. It can't account for the distracted drivers, those that like to text on Facebook, drive and check your email at the same time. It can't account for a deer that may run out in the middle of the road. It can't account for all the things that are going to, that's going to be in my pathway on my way to where my destination is. So we're not telling you, when we're talking about the great, we're teaching about the grace of God, reaping from the kingdom, we're drawing you this map. We're not telling you that there's nothing going to be in your way, on your way to that destination. But what we're saying is, he's already made a way out of whatever it is, is in your way, on your way to your destination. Amen? Amen. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about defeating doubt. We're going to be talking about defeating doubt. Because if there's anything that's going to, that will stalemate you or keep you in the same place that you were in 2017 and 2018, if, they, if, if there's anything that's going to keep you in the same position, it will be doubt. It will be doubt because doubt is going in between believing and unbelieving. The Bible calls it a double-minded man. The Bible calls it a double-minded man. So doubt hinders your faith. It hinders, it's the opposite of faith. Faith is wanting to order your footsteps, but so does doubt. So does doubt. And today we're gonna, I'm going to give you some foundational scriptures. And I'm also going to share our journey with defeating doubt personally. Because all you need, this is what I do know, all you need is one victory. All you need is one victory over doubt. And what that one victory does is it gives you the confidence that if you defeat it at one time, you can defeat it again. Amen? All you need is one. All you need is one time where you don't quit. And I know that out of our own personal journey. Um, so I'm teaching you something not from what, I, what I've read, or what I've heard, but what we've been through. Amen? I mean, you know, if I tell you, have you ever stopped to ask someone for directions, and they say, I'm not really from here, then they try to give you directions anyway? <laughs> it's like, ah, I'm not really sure, but if you go to them, I'm like, nah, once you say you are not from here, uh, I, I'm good. Thank you very much. So I'm not telling you, no, nah, I've never been down that road, but here's a potential if you... And see, that's what religion does. They're telling you to, well, if you do this, then this should happen. But Jesus said, you're, 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 doing, you're, giving, you're putting burdens on their shoulders that you won't even carry. He told Nicodemus, he said, no, we teach what we know. He said, I'm teaching you, how can you understand? If you don't understand earthly things, how can you understand heavenly things? So I'm teaching you today what I know. I'm throwing it out there for you to catch it. But it's up to you to catch it. 
And like I said before, all you need is one victory over doubt. Amen? Hey, Amen. Let's get into it. Praise God. Let's go to uh, Mark, excuse me, Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14. Uh, we'll begin at verse 26. Praise God. When you're there, you can say amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 14, verse 26. It says, when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. Verse 27, but Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Verse 28, Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Verse 29, come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. Verse 30. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Verse 31. Immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? Here's what I do know. Peter was accustomed to the boat. Amen? I mean, we know Peter come from the background of fishing. That's what he did for a living. That was his place of comfort. He knew about the boat. See, you see, trust will get you out of the boat. Trust in God will get you out of your boat, your boat, your comfort, your comfort of living. Trust in God will get you out of the boat. Faith will order your steps from that point. Faith will order your steps from that point. Doubt short circuits that faith. Doubt short circuits that faith. Trust, he had to trust that either he stepped out, of, if he stepped out of that boat to come, success or fail, Jesus was with him, amen? In your life, you have to, trust will get you out of that boat to say, okay, Lord, I trust you. Success or fail, success or fail, I trust you. I'm stepping out. Faith says, okay, now I want you to submit. It may submit, say, faith may say, submit your resume here. Lord, I'm not qualified for that. Faith says submit your resume here. Doubt comes in, introduces a second thought. I'm not qualified for this. Let me go back to school. Let me take on another student loan and get another debt. You see, doubt can create in your life like faith can create in your life. Faith takes hold of the finished works of Christ. But doubt can also create in your life. We're going to look at that in a second. Trust in God gets you out of your boat. Faith will begin to order your footsteps, but doubt, if doubt wants to introduce a second thought that short circuits that very faith that said, come. You see, I equate, equate, I equate doubt in the life of a Christian to a car that you fill up with. Instead of gasoline, you fill it up with water. Still a car. You're not going anywhere. You're still a Christian. You won't, you won't go anywhere. It hinders forward progress. It hinders forward progress. You're still a believer. If you die now, you made Jesus Lord and Savior. You'll go to heaven. But doubt is as toxic to a believer as water is to a car. 
And if not addressed, then you'll see yourself as a believer, a seasoned believer, 20 years saved, and still at the same place as when you started. Amen? Let's go over to uh, Matthew chapter 21. Praise God. Matthew chapter 21, verse 21. It says, Jesus replied, truly I tell you, if you have faith and do not doubt, not only can you do what was done to the fig tree, but you can also say to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and it will be done. Verse 22, if you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. Faith says believe, believe, believe. Doubt says what if, what if, what if. What have I done, what have I done, what have I done? It introduces another thought that short circuits your belief only. We looked at last week, um, the story of Jairus, as he followed Christ, he kept following Christ. He kept following Christ. The Bible says he was the first one that Christ, he came to Christ when he got off the boat. But yet, as he was following Christ, he, he said, my, my child is dying. Come lay hands on her. He's following Christ. He's following Christ. He's seeing other people benefit from Christ being healed. The woman with the issue of blood come running. She came running through the crowd. She got her healing. But we always look at the action of the, the woman with the issue of blood as, as that's great faith. That's great. And it is. She, she believed God. She believed and got her healing. Um, but we, sometimes we overlook the standing power that he, he believed only. He kept believing. He kept believing. He kept following. He kept following. When that second thought of his family came to him and said, don't trouble the teacher anymore. The child is dead. I mean, you know, that's a second thought. Jesus immediately said, don't fear, believe only. Believe only. See, we're, we're understanding a lot of, our, of what grace has done for us. We're understanding a lot of what all the finished works of Christ are. We're, we're telling you these things hinder the flow of it in your life. These things, doubt can hinder the flow of the finished works of Christ in your life. It's not a matter if it's what you have to do to get it. It's a finished work. Your salvation is paid for. It's finished. It's all done. It's all done. We're not telling you what you have to do. I'm telling you, we're telling you what stops the flow of it from reaching your life. Which causes frustration in so many believers. Doubt will move you to self-effort. Doubt moves you to self-effort. Because what it is is saying, I don't believe that God's promises will come to pass. So let me help him out. Amen? And everyone, this, is, this touches home to everyone because we all have been there. Right? Us include, me included. I'm going to share with you. A personal testimony of overcoming doubt. But I do know this, that once, I, once we overcame it that one time and had victory that one time, it, it, now it's nothing to us. Because we understand now he's faithful to his word first and foremost. What he says will come to pass. Don't, every time that second thought comes in, it's your response on how long that thought will stay. Doubt is that second thought. Believe only, doubt comes in and says, what about your degree? What about your education level? What about how long have you been with the company? Why do you believe you feel like you need a raise? And, you say, and, and if you introduce that thought, you say, you know what, you're right. You're right. I don't deserve this. 
How many of you know Jesus didn't come because we deserved him? Amen? He didn't come because we, we were good. He came while we what? Were yet sinners. Considered enemies to God. He came for us. So it's not about what we deserve. It's not about any, all of us deserved hell. It, but if it were not for Christ. Amen? Praise God. Praise God. Uh, let's go over to James chapter 1. James chapter 1, we'll begin in verse 2. James chapter 1, verse 2. It says, consider, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Uh, verse 4, let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Verse 5, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Uh, verse 6, but when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a, a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. Verse 7, that person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Verse 8, such a person is double-minded and unstable in all that he do. In all they do. A double-minded man is a man that constantly lives in, in, in doubt. Always opening yourself to the second thought. Always opening yourself to your second thought. Have you all met, you all have met people that have great ideas, great inventions. They just got a lot of them. Amen. I used to be that guy. A lot of ideas, great ideas, great invention, but it was just a lot of them. And never were able to fo focus on one to see one come to pass. Double mind, always willing to accept the, the new thing, the, the second thought. The enemy, if he wants to destroy the vision, he'll give you another vision. He'll give you another vision and another vision. And when 10 years go by, you're still getting different visions. None of them come to pass. Always accepting the second thought. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. But there is good news, amen? There, God is faithful to, he's faithful to his word. He's faithful to his word. Um, as I said, the doubt wants to produce in your life just like faith Faith wants to receive the finished works in your life. Let's look at how doubt will produce in your life. Let's go over to Genesis chapter 15. Verse 2. Verse 2, it says, But Abram said, Sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless? And the one who will inherit my estate is Eliezer of Damascus. Verse 3, And Abram said, You have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. Verse 4, Then the, Lord, then the word of the Lord came to him, This man will be your heir. But a son who is, who is your own flesh, 
and blood will be your heir. Verse 5, he took him outside and said, look up at the sky and count the stars. If indeed you can count them, then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. So he got the word of the Lord. He says, this man will not be your heir, but a son who is your own flesh and blood will be your heir. That's the word, amen? That's what he said. Not only did he give him a word, but he also gave him vision. In case you forget what I say, go outside and look up, and you can see the stars. So he gave him, he gave him his word, and he gave him vision to focus on in case he forget what he said. So that's, that's the word of the Lord. Oftentimes you get a, we get a word of the Lord. You got to stay there. You got to stay there. He gave, he gave him a vision as well. And just in case he forgot what the word was, let's go over to Genesis chapter 16. So we see Abraham got the word of the Lord on what was going to happen regarding him and his son. Here's the second thought. Verse six, uh, Genesis 16, uh, beginning at verse 1. It says, Now Sarah, Abram's wife, had borne him no children, but she had an Egyptian slave named Hagar. Verse 2, so she said to Abram, the Lord has kept me from having children. Go sleep with my slave. Perhaps I can build a family through her. Second thought. That was Abram's second thought. Maybe the Lord is not going to be faithful to what his word is. Maybe we need to do this on our own. Maybe we need to create this child on our own. Doubt will move you to create an Ishmael when God is trying to put an Isaac in your life. Amen? He's trying to, he, he had a word. She introduced a second thought, moved him to a place of doubt. Moved him to a place of doubt, which thus created Ishmael through Hagar. And God was trying to get him an Isaac. God was trying to get him an Isaac. I can recall when uh, some years ago, when uh, my wife and I, we were called into this ministry. And it was 2012, and uh, we were visiting College Park, World Changers in College Park, and there I received the word to walk away from my career. Walk away from my career. Right in the midst of service, I heard the Lord. It was clear as day. It's like everything around me just stopped. Um. He said, turn that notice in that you wrote. Because I wrote a two weeks notice out for my job, but I never turned it in. He said, turn that in. Um, trust me with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. He said, this will be the hardest thing that you will ever do. But if you trust me, you'll come out greater than you were when you went in it. Um, I did that, told my, told my wife on the way home. We were driving home from Atlanta. I said, I told her what he said. She said, well, if he said it, then that's what you need to do. So that's why you have to be mindful of who you, who you got around you. Amen? Because um, it, couldn't, it couldn't just be a situation to where, well, no matter what she says, I'm going to do it because we're, we're one. We're one. We have a son at this time. At this time, we had a son, um, and we didn't, have a, we didn't have our daughter yet. So that was the word of the Lord. He said it was going to be extremely hard. You know if the Lord says it's going to be hard, and <laughs> it's going to be hard, amen? <laughs> so, but here's the thing. As I said before, trust, trust got Peter out of the boat. Success or fail we trusted him. Success or fail, we trust God. 
So we stepped out. This was in February of 2012. February of 2012. And I remember saying, Lord, if we lose everything we have, that's okay. Because we, we know we have everything in you. Trust will get you out of that boat. But faith will begin to order your footsteps. So we did that. We stepped out. I stepped out. I was the only, my wife, was, she was a stay-at-home mom with our son. I was providing for the house, so I thought. <laughs> so I thought. I was the man of the house providing for the resources for the house, doing an honorable thing. But God was showing me, he said, this is a journey of trust that I'm getting ready to take you on. That when you finish, you'll never not trust me for anything. He said, you'll never not trust me for anything. Now, I'm sure someone, someone right now this is ministering to, that God has, has been speaking to you, trying to instruct you to take you to a greater place in your life, but doubt keeps coming in and short-circuiting that word. Doubt keeps coming in, and if this is all I minister to you today, is my testimony of our overcoming this doubt then I've done what I needed to do. Amen? So we, we walk away. We're in Atlanta. Um, excuse me, we were here in Gastonia, close to Charlotte. I put my two weeks notice in, uh, walked away from the company. And for, the, for a little while, it was, it was okay. It was good. We were going. But when that pressure came on, that pressure came on. I'm walking with him. He, now, he didn't say go apply somewhere else. <laughs> so he didn't say, go, he didn't say go, go start a business. He didn't say none of that. So this wasn't, oh, well, I walked away from my job and I wouldn't start a business and it came. No, this, I'm walking. We're walking with him. We're walking with him. Um, everything, manhood, everything began to begin challenging for me. You're a man of the house. How are you going to? All these thoughts were coming in. I'm trusting him. And then second thoughts kept coming in. Well, why don't you go do this? Why don't you go do this? Go do that. But I got a word from God. This is what he said to do. I know it's foolish to you all, but this is what he said to me. So the thoughts kept coming in. The pressure kept coming on. Pressure on our, every, everything we had, we lost. Everything. But I stand here before you today, a fully restored. Everything we lost, plus some things paid off. Amen? Amen. Everything. Everything we had bought. And in that process of dying to ourselves, what I mean by that is I was not the same after that process from who I was before, who I was before. Um, how did we overcome the doubts? Because what, what would have happened is if I would have, we would have submitted to doubt now, I would have just went ahead and apologized to the company and came back on board and, and just went on about my business and said, well, I heard wrong. Let's, you know, let's just, can I come back on board? Or I went and went and got in another job or whatever. Just kind of something to bail ourselves out of it. But what, I, what we had to do to defeat doubt is, number one, I had to believe his word. Amen? We had to believe, you have to believe his word. Our, my day-to-day -day fellowship with him conditioned me to believe his word. Our day-to-day -day fellowship, your day-to-day -day fellowship with the Father 
will condition you to believe him at his word. Because if it's not a day-to-day fellowship, you could be hearing the voice of someone else. So for one, you have to know his voice. Um, And how do you do that? You get in the word. You get in the word. And you keep getting in the word. And then when you get a word like that, so this is not something to say, hey, go leave your job, go do this, go do that. What I'm saying is listen to the, the spirit of it. You have to know his voice. You have to know his voice because the enemy's going to, he's going to be trying to talk as well. So this, this is, you have to know, his, I knew his voice. I knew his voice by his word. And when, you, when I say that, he's not going to have you do anything crazy. He's not going to have you do anything that's going to be dishonorable. He's not going to have you do anything deceiving. He's not going to have you do anything robbing people. He's not going to have you doing those things and, uh, so it's important you to say because someone can say, well, I heard the Lord say, go take this guy's car because he didn't need it anyway. <laughs> no, he didn't say that. <laughs> I'm just being a little, I'm just right, pretty much right now, I'm just coming real with you. The thoughts were real. The thoughts of failure were real. The thoughts of losing everything were real. The thoughts of the shame that would come forth before my family, uh, our family, were real. We had to know his voice. Can nobody know his voice like you know his voice? So it's pointless to try to explain to others that, hey, this is what the, because they're going to say, no, that's, that's not, that doesn't seem right to me. No, you have to know his voice. I knew his voice when he said it. Um, so that's first. Then obviously I believe his word. I believe his word. Trust will get you out of the boat. Because success or failure, you realize you trust him, that he'll sustain your life. And all of losing everything, we never went in lack of anything. We had supply for everything we needed. That's what he was trying to show us. Listen, you can trust me at my word. Some of you got a word from the Lord. You've been had a word from the Lord. But doubt keeps coming in and short-circuiting that word. And you go another year with the same word that the Lord gave you. It's on your heart. He's giving it to you. But doubt keeps coming in and suppressing that word. And that's how you'll stay in the same 2018 as you were in 2017. Not not anymore, amen? Because now you know how to defeat. You know how to defeat doubt. You know how to defeat it. Because here's one thing. It says those that live godly, the word says those that live godly will suffer persecution. So if you're, if you're going to be walking this out and you're going to be serious about your, your Christianity and being godly, it says you will suffer these things. But fear not. For he has overcome the world. And where are we? We're in him. Amen. Amen. So we're overcomers because he overcame. Now, I wouldn't stand up here and tell you that it was easy. It, it, like the Lord said, it was the hardest thing we've ever done. It challenged everything against our flesh, everything against our mindset on who we used to be and how we knew our household was supposed to run. But in the same time, it changed us in the whole process. Some of you got to step out of the boat. 2018, I'm stepping out. Who's willing to make that confession? 2018, I'm stepping out. I'm trusting God at his word. Success or fail, I trust him. Because I know he loves me. 
I know he cares for me, and there's nothing that's going to come on me that he cannot bring me through. I'm telling you, he's trying to take you to a greater level. The disciples that were following Christ, they were not just following him to just learn his lifestyle. He was trying to take them to a greater level of faith as he was moving towards the cross. He was trying to take them from where they were to bring them to where they needed to be. He's trying to take you somewhere. Will you let him? Will you let him? Trust gets you out of the boat. Then allow faith to order your footsteps. Faith will, faith will begin to instruct you. You don't have to worry about, okay, what happens after I step out? Faith will begin to order your steps. What, go here. Call this person. I've already made a path for you. But you don't get past the level of trust. You don't understand where the faith is trying to take you to. Because, once again, doubt suppresses that. Doubt keeps you suppressed. And it keeps you from moving forth in life. Amen? Praise God. Praise God. Let's go over to uh, Hebrews chapter 4. Are you all receiving anything out of today? Amen. We teach what we know. Amen. If you don't know how to take this home, whatever you're learning here and apply it to your life, it does nothing for you. I could get you excited running around, but you wouldn't be able to take that home with you. That stops here. The emotions, the emotional part of it. Yeah, it is good to be excited. I'm excited. I'm excited because someone's going to take this. Someone's being ministered to and says, you know what? I've been holding this. Doubt has been ruling my life for years now. I'm going to decide to step out and trust God. Amen? Uh, Hebrews chapter 4. Verse 10. So as we're walking on our journey, we've had to remind ourselves of what God's word says. And how long do you do that? How long did we do that? I mean, this was constantly, all the time, thoughts coming in. That second thought trying to introduce itself constantly, constantly, every day, all day. The more violent it got, the more violent I had to get in reminding what the word of God said. You don't just entertain those thoughts. You, you keep reminding, the more those thoughts come, the more you keep casting them down. This is what the word of the Lord said. This is what the word of the Lord said. Till you get to this place right here, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 10. It says that for anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their works just as God did from his. Verse 11, let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest so that no one will perish by following their example of disobedience. Verse 12, it says, for the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow, it judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. The Bible says we labor to rest. So you have to, you have to take the promise of God. When doubt comes in, you have to remind yourself this is what the word of the Lord says. You have to remind yourself till you enter that place of rest. Because when it says he, that when you enter that rest, you also cease from your works. But if you allow doubt to stay in there, you'll, you'll find your place, and you're not, you're not casting that thought down, and you're not laboring to enter into rest. That's what laboring to enter into rest is like. You're speaking that word. You're reminding yourself this is what the word says. 
This is what the this is what God said. I, I'm I'm casting those thoughts, those thoughts that are trying to come in and trying to p- penetrate my heart. I'm casting those thoughts down because this is what the word of the Lord said. And you have to do that till those thoughts cease and rest comes over you. Amen. That's how we got victory. That's how we got victory. We just kept reminding what the word, what the word said. You have to remind us, and it's and it's and it's always the the intensity of it is always greater when there's purpose on your life. When there's purpose on your life, the intensity of doubt always increases with the purpose. It always when you're in the will of God for your life. Oh, you can expect intensity. Why? Because it's trying to move you. It's trying to remove you from the will of God. And I see so many Christians, so many believers fall to this. The pressure comes on. The pressure comes on. And because they don't know how to respond, they submit to the doubt. Well, maybe I'm, you know, yeah, I think I heard the Lord say I, this is the ministry I'm supposed to be a part of. But it's too much pro- problems going on in my life for me to be a part of this ministry. Maybe I'm in the wrong place. They take that thought. Well, honey, let's go find us another church. I, I just don't think that's, it's just too much going on in our house. As soon as we join that church, it's just all these things start happening in our lives. But this is, this is how it happens. When you're at the place of purpose, the intensity of doubt comes ten times stronger than you ju- if you're just in the wrong place. Because you can stay at the wrong place for 20 years and, and just be satisfied there. Once again, we teach what we know. Amen? This is not something that we haven't been through. I know what the violent intensity of, like, of doubt trying to enter a man's soul to move you away from the will of God for your life. I know what that's like. The people were amazed at Jesus' teaching because he taught as one with authority, because he knew what he was talking about. Not only did he know, but he'd been through what he was talking about. He said he was tempted in every way that we were, yet, yet without sin. So he wasn't teaching from something he didn't know. I'm teaching you from something that I know. I know what it's like when you're in the will of God and the intensity of doubt comes in. That second thought, that double-minded, that double-minded man. It says, don't expect, he don't expect to receive anything from the Lord. In James chapter 2, uh, excuse me, James uh, chapter 1, verse, verse 8. Praise God. But this year, repeat this after me. I'm stepping out. You're stepping out of that boat. Amen? The walls of that boat will not constrain you any longer. The walls of doubt will no longer constrain you from walking into God's purpose. They will no longer hold you back. That walls of doubt will no longer hold you back from what God has for you. Once again, we're drawing the road map. It's saying this is the, fin- the work is finished. Grace finished the work for us. Faith lays hold of it. But we're, we're also saying, hey, th- what about the road on the way to the finished works? There are hills, there are bumps, there's distracted drivers, there's things in your path on your way to the finished works of Christ. I'm talking about the road ahead. I'm talking about the path that you're on as you're waiting to receive the finished works of Christ in your life. These are things that that we don't account for on the path to receiving. Amen? Doubt is the greatest hindrance in the life of a believer as anything. 
Satan came into the, uh, the serpent came into the garden. They got the word from the Lord. Don't touch the tree. <laughs> Don't touch the tree. Eat all of the trees in the garden except for this one. What happened? He introduced a second thought. He introduced a second thought. Which hindered them from being in the will of God. They were in the, in the perfect will of God. In the perfect will of God. They were there. And some of you will have days when you're in the, when you're in the perfect will of God for your life and your family. And I'm telling you, be on guard for the second thought. Amen? Be on guard for that second thought. It doesn't come with, with, it's nothing big, it's nothing fancy, it's subtle. It's subtle. It's not something even noticeable. It's subtle. Be on guard. Guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life. Guard your heart. It's subtle. I'm telling you what I know. It comes in, and sometimes it comes through. You might not see a, uh, you know, some animal that you see on TV, how they portray Satan to be. It may not look like that. It may be somebody you know. <laughs> but be on guard. Guard your heart. It's the words they're trying to implant. There's nothing else other than the word, the second thought. What, especially when you got a word from God. Especially when you got a word from God. Be on, be on guard. The work is finished. The supply is yours. The kingdom is ours. It's on the inside of us. There's nothing else we need to do but guard, that guard our hearts so that we don't have any block, anything blocking the finished works of Christ coming into our life. Every Christian deals with this. Whether we want to say it or not, every Christian deals with this issue of doubt coming in. Once you, you, you made the confession, you, you got the word on it, you've done everything we're telling you to do, you've been on the journey with us, you, you're confessing the word, you're, you're together, you're praying as a couple. But that time now, from the time you began confessing that word and, and all those things now in the in-between, when you stop confessing the word, you, you're no longer excited about speaking the word, you're waiting now. Now comes, with, and it comes in with that second thought. Well, what have you done to receive that? Why do you, you know, maybe, maybe if you did a little more, maybe that blessing to speed up. <laughs> maybe you can speed that thing up if you just kind of do a little more. It's the second thought when you're not paying attention. When you're not paying attention. It's the second thought that tries to come in and says, okay, it's trying to divide your household, your marriage. It's the second thought. This is what the word says about your children. I recall, I recall uh, you know, we went to a conference of our, of our son and I know what the word says about our children. Hey Amen. They're blessed. So we're sitting in a conference, and the teacher just, well, he hasn't been doing this. He has been doing this. He, he's not, he's not, he's not, and they just kept going on and on about who he is or, and, or what he's not doing and what he's, just kept going on and on. And our, their, our, both of our kids were sitting beside us. And my wife, she can tell you, it's just, it's just, no, no, we're not confessing this. I said, what has he done good? <laughs> I said, because what you're saying is not our child. <laughs> what has he, and, and they look surprised, like, oh, oh, no, no, you're not going to just talk about my son like this? <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> I know my kid. And see, what, hap what happens is something that simple will have you saying that at your house. Yeah, he's not, yeah, he ain't, you know, he's not this, he's not that, he's not. No, I know who he is. He's a child of the Most High God. They blessed and highly favored. 
And so it changed that whole conversation. Oh, well, yeah, he does this great. He does, and, and the kid has almost straight A's. So I said, what you are saying does not line up with what we're seeing and who we know our child to be. But what I'm saying is those second thoughts come in. And if you, if you don't cast those thoughts down, you take those thoughts and then you begin speaking them over your own children. Because this is what the teacher said. This is what someone else said. I know it wasn't her, but at the same time, I wasn't just going to, we just couldn't let that go on like that. You understand what I'm saying? But what I'm saying is, don't let that subtle second thought come in to rob you. The work is finished. It's yours. It's yours. Peace is yours. Prosperity, success in every area of life is yours. Healing is yours. Don't let the second thought of, well, maybe you hadn't done enough to receive healing. No, you are already healed. But the enemy wants to come in and impl implement a second thought. As we saw when Peter stepped out of the boat, he got the word come. You st all right, you took the first step. You trust me. Now you got out of your boat. Now faith says come. Christ says come. Then when he began to sing, he, it, it began to show evidence of doubt. Evidence of doubt. That will always hinder forward progress in your life. It, will always, it always hinders forward progress in your life. That's why we have to be diligent in guarding our hearts. Amen? You have to be diligent at it. Someone say, man, does it take all this to be a Christian? No, believing in Jesus. But if you want to be a successful Christian, absolutely. <laughs> If you, wanna, if you don't want to be stuck the same way 20, 30 years from now, absolutely. You have to be mindful of these things. What, what are you hearing? What are you receiving? Because there's things we're hearing all the time. You're hearing things all throughout the day. So, yeah, you may be hearing them, but you don't have to receive them. Amen? You don't have to receive that. We can't stop hearing you're always going to hear stuff, but you, you don't have to receive it. That's what we're saying. And how you receive it is you begin to think on that versus thinking on what the promises of God are. The Bible says they got back in the boat. When you're in doubt, it's going, you're going to be going backwards. I don't, believe he should, I don't believe he was going to get back in the boat. I believe he was going to meet the disciples on the other end. But he got back in the boat because he sank, and doubt was present. There was nothing else he could do. Amen? Praise God. Praise God. Let us lift our hands. Father, we thank you that we are free from doubt today. In 2018, we boldly declare that we're stepping out. We trust you, Lord. Thank you, Father. You are worthy to be praised. We declare that there is nothing hindering the finished works of Christ from manifesting on the regular in our lives. Glory to your name. We thank you that 2018 will be the best year of our lives. Thank you. There will be nothing hindering us from moving forth in your purpose that you have for us. We thank you for it now. In Jesus' name, and everybody say it. Amen, amen. Let's give God praise, amen? Praise God. Amen. Did you all receive anything out of the word today? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Now is an, it's our opportunity to respond.
It's not an opportunity to respond to what you've heard today. Let's sow into what you've heard today. Let's sow into what you've heard today. We don't give out of necessity. For we are cheerful givers. We give out a heart of thanksgiving. We give out of a heart of we're so grateful that he's provided us the ability to gather wealth. Amen? And he's blessed the works of our hands. And he's blessed the works of our hands that we may have to give. That we may have it to give. Bible says, given and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give into your bosom. We don't give it to get, but that is a natural response to giving. When you give it, you receive. You don't give to receive, but it's a natural response. When you give, you will receive. Amen? If you need an offering envelope, if you would, just raise your hands. I'll sure get you one. Or if you're doing text to give, the texting information is on the screen. Praise God. It is well. All you need is one victory over doubt, and you'll never live in doubt again. Amen? Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. If your offerings are ready, if you would lift those up. Praise God. Father, we thank you. For it is you that gives seed to the sower, as well as bread to the eater, Father. We thank you that we give out, a heart, out of a heart of cheerfulness, Father. It symbolizes our trust in you. We trust you, Lord. And we give like we know we trust you. And we thank you that it is you that multiplied the seed sown. And we give you thanks for it. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Ushers, you all may collect Pastor Buckets. Praise God. Praise God. And while they're passing the buckets, uh, just some things for you to think about. Uh, that really could have an eternal effect on your life um, if you're not born again. If you're not born again and you want to make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, let's make that decision today. Let's make that decision today. If you would like to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. That is a great gift and it's available for you. It takes your relationship with Christ to a whole nother level. To a whole nother level. If you don't have a church home, you believe God's called you to be a part of world
Praise God. Father, we thank you for the decisions that have been made today, spoken and unspoken. Hearts that have been changed, Father, because of your word. We're thankful for it, Father. We give you praise for it in Jesus' name. We add our faith with theirs that they shall not be the same from this day forth. In Jesus' name, we pray and everyone said, amen, amen. Let's give God praise, amen? Amen, amen. Praise God. Real briefly, one quick announcement, and we'll let you go. Um, New Year's Eve service will begin, corporate prayer will begin at 9.30 tonight. Our doors open at 9, corporate prayer at 9.30 uh, tonight. Amen? We love you. Let, let's lift our hands be dismissed. Father, we thank you for the word tonight. We thank you that great grace is upon us all. Doors are opening that no man can close. Greater are you in us than he that's in the world. We have victory in everything that we do because you're with us and you never leave us nor forsake us. We thank you that as we go forth today, we thank you that uh, things that we didn't even know you shall begin revealing to us. Your purpose for our lives will be evident and clear to us. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everybody, everyone that agrees said, amen. Love you all. You're dismissed.